All right, welcome to the uh, first episode of the Retro Bar Room podcast. We're going to hope to do this every Friday morning at 10.30. It'll also be uh, saved. See, I think it might have just started there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to start over there. I don't know exactly what's going on there, but we are now live from the uh, Retro Bar Room, episode one of our podcast series. We're going to hope to uh, do this every Friday morning at 10.30, but we're also, it'll be saved to Facebook, so you can watch it whenever uh, you feel like you want to do that. Uh, I realize me and Paul don't work Fridays, but uh, a lot of people do, so you might end up watching this tomorrow morning or whenever you do. Anyway, uh, episode one, we're going to basically uh, sort of kick around, let you get to know us a little bit. Uh, Believe it or not, we only got to know each other, what, maybe a year yeah. ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never knew Paul before. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could be a good thing because he was a police officer, so I had no interaction <laughs> with him, which isn't bad. Yes, we didn't uh, meet after I was Yeah, yeah I, I didn't meet yeah. till I, now he's my bodyguard. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'll let, I'm going to turn this over to Paul a little bit to let him sort of let you know where he grew up, where he went to school, and how he ended up as a police officer. Lawyers. Yeah, okay. So, um, grew up in Ephrata, Akron area. Went to Ephrata School District. Um, Go ahead. Started in police work in 95, did 25 years, and just recently retired like a year and a half ago. So there was, in in that uh, career of of 25 years, there was a lot of different uh, things that happened, um, good and bad. Uh, that we could uh, tap into to discuss uh, as a learning uh, tool what uh, maybe to do, what maybe not to do. Um, And in my last five years was the school resource officer for the effort of school district. So um, after 25 years, I was done. That was it. So now we're on to a new phase of life and getting to know Kelly, good friend, (laughs) good guy, and suggested hey let's do a podcast they're like well, what are we going to talk about well it could be kind of like seinfeld and <laughs> yeah, we don't it. know what we're going to yeah. do who knows let's just pick a subject and just talk about it and see if uh anybody is interested in getting into the discussion on what we talk about all right um uh, i would say this uh i'm i'm just i'm clicking something here so don't get excited I see we have two viewers. I don't even know if you're still there. If you, if there's any issues going on, please comment on that. Uh, if the volume isn't where it should be, if you're not even seeing, I guess if you're not seeing it, you're not going to be able to comment. But just give us a thumbs up or whatever if you're out there, so we know that we're just not talking to ourselves. Yeah. And, uh, oh so, well, that's fun too. Oh yeah. yeah that, <laughs> but you're not getting any uh, enjoyment nope. out of it. Can you hear us, Andrea? <laughs> Are we good? Is the video decent? Can you hear us? The audio is what you really need to hear. Yeah, we look the same as yeah, pretty much what we do yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah, you know, we're not on here because of our looks. So if you can't yeah. really see us, the video isn't the greatest, that's fine. If Hearing us is the main part. Um, so anyway, at least Andrea's out there and she responded, so I guess we're good to go. Yeah. Uh, I, myself, uh, born in Ephrata. Were you born in You were born in Ephrata. Uh, I was born in Columbia. Oh, oh, uh, oh And that's we right. moved to Akron, Ephrata area when I was three years old. So I didn't really know much about Columbia being only three years old. Okay. Uh, but my whole family, uh, both mother and father, were both from Columbia. All right. But my whole life pretty much was Ephra to Akron. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I uh, I actually was born in Ephra, in the Ephra Hospital, like a couple blocks from here. And uh, my first year of life, I was in Shannick in what was a converted uh chicken house mm. uh apartment i obviously don't recollect it i lived there till i was one moved down to a second floor apartment on the 300 block of main street denver and then uh, when i was three we moved to a uh, half a house my mom still actually lives in the same house half of a double up in the north denver hood and uh, that's where i learned to talk and that's why i sound the way i do i've been accused of being from boston from pittsburgh last night i was accused of being from pittsburgh i just was up the street in denver <laughs> so anyway i went to calico high school uh graduated in 79 i am by the way like uh what six seven years older than paul mm-hmm. yet he's the retired guy and i got 
technically I got four jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you and, uh, yeah, <laughs> Me not so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's why we're doing this podcast because <laughs> you know I have nothing better to do anymore. I got to have something um, to do. But but I always wanted to do a podcast, and and then uh, he sort of you know he's the one who resurrected the idea. Really, he got you know we talked about it at trivia the one night and. Uh, the next week he came in. We, if it would have been up to him, we would have did this last week. But yeah. I said, "Hey, I got to figure out how I hooked <laughs> everything up for my trip, and then we'll go ahead and do it." But anyway, I uh, went to Catalico. I did uh, when I graduated. I worked for a year at Weaver Industries, and then I went to Burke's Camp. Well, actually, then I went to Millersville for about a month. And you know, I I was a young kid, and I went to Millersville basically to play football. It hurt my ankle, and after a month, I realized that. Uh, I ain't going to cut it here school-wise. I took computer science, and I thought everybody was on the same level as me at Cacalico. We didn't have computers or anything. Apparently, every other high school did, or at least data punch card kind of thing, and I was lost. So I bailed when I still got some tuition back, went to Penn State Berks campus. I did get a two-year degree in business there. Uh, Don't know whether it really ever helped me since then, but I do have that two-year business degree. Then I worked as a machinist for the last... 40 years, just part-time right now, but I did just about everything under the sun in machine shop trade, uh, but I don't even know how I got involved. I happened to work there right out of college. The more you're working at a place, the more they pay you. You sort of get stuck because of that because you want to change careers, but you don't make as much. And So I never really sat down and said, hey, I want to be a machinist, but mm-hmm. I did it for 40 years. I'm sort of phasing that out gradually, and uh, I'm actually living my dream doing trivia right now. Uh, I still sell things on eBay, and I also have a 3D printer that I, other than during the COVID shutdown when I printed a bunch of uh, face mask headbands, I really don't use it. Uh, I thought I would, but I don't that much. So trivia is my big thing right now. So. And, and the trivia is, i got to say, fantastic because, you know, that's <laughs> one of the reasons we're friends is we went to one of the trivia nights. Well, now, let's remember, you did you were at trivia a couple times before you decided to stay and play. Well, yeah, that's true because, because you my like wife and I are else. not... You were, yeah, people. you were like everybody else and said, mm-hmm. well, we're not playing. We yeah. don't know anything. We're no, out of yeah, here. We're exactly, out of here. Yeah. And then, I don't know what made you decide to stay one week. Well, it was did. probably you saying, just answer the question. <laughs> yeah. Just here's the page. And all of a sudden, that's all it takes. And then you're hooked. <laughs> then, then it becomes a weekly thing. And, and I'm glad it did. But, uh, but yeah, we didn't, uh, we didn't know each other a year, well, maybe two, a year and a half, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So we, we did not. So it's tribute. not like, it's not like we grew up together. No, this is, no. <laughs> I mean, we're actually going to find things out about each other yeah. that because of that. You yeah. Know? And uh, the trivia was 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 good. Um, and his energy level is is amazing. <laughs> I got to say. So uh, that was just. Hey, I got to get to know this guy. This guy's really cool. This, you know. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I, I you know, sometimes with trivia, I'm a little. You know, I got to say I am blessed with the followings I have at everywhere I go. And I sometimes wonder if it's because I'm that decent at doing trivia or everybody comes out and it's like a train wreck and they just want to be there in case <laughs> something comes out of my mouth. They want to be able to say, I was there the night he did that. <laughs> and that was, but anyway, it, it's uh, working out great. Yes, um, every now and then he'll he'll let it slip and give an answer. Well, I will. Question, I, I have you know, done that. Uh, and, and the, the pronunciations it, are hilarious. It, yeah, I'm actually, now we can't see it right now, but when we go back, and maybe you at home, maybe you're able to see, but I know this Facebook now does the uh, closed caption thing. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. So I'm interested to oh, see yeah. when I, like, <laughs> like, if, like if I say Aaron Parrott, what's it going to write up there, you know? Uh, but anyway. Uh, well, uh, and your, and your uh, not only your pronunciations, and, and uh, you have the Ritchie, Oh, yeah, uh, the Rootsy Revelator, who made a, a, a comeback last week just because yeah. I dug the old video up. I'm not gonna, I promise, I, uh, today anyway, I ain't going to use his voice. No, yet. no, but <laughs> if you get a chance and you see that, that is absolutely hilarious. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I, uh, I don't think anybody actually clicked and watched that whole video. The funniest part is about the two and a half minute mark <laughs> about missing dogs. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> And that was all I had lived, much like this is going to be. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So anyway, you went to Effort High School. Yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, yep. Went through the. Yep. What elementary did you get to? I went to Akron. Akron okay. Elementary. Akron Elementary. Yeah. Uh, I went to the yeah. Denver Elementary, which was 
prior to being an elementary school was the old Denver High School, the one that's now apartment buildings in, on Walnut and 4th Street in Denver. And uh, then I went, obviously, from there to the Cacalico Middle School and High School. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, we're talking about high schools, and, and it came to me this morning while I was on the other side of that wall working out, school nicknames. Like there, there's, oh, yeah. there, well, not just school, but like even professional team nicknames. Uh-huh. There, there's all these issues. Well, when I went to Cacalico, well, they still are the Cacalico Eagles. Nothing wrong with an eagle. But do you know what the word Cacalico actually means in the Indian language? It was probably a trivia question. I should no, remember. It, well, it might, I think it maybe was at the Denver. Yeah, Cacalico I probably can't effort, remember this, but I don't but, uh, remember. And any, anybody out there watching, uh, there may be, I mean, I do theme trivia from now, now and again, like I did the Friends, Star Wars, Big Bang Theory. If you're out there watching and you tune into this on a weekly basis, there's no given thing that in a year from now you're not going to have the theme trivia of the Retro Barroom podcast. So take notes, my <laughs> Take notes. But anyway, that yes, Cocalico, Cocalico, means it, it was a, I think I just looked it up this morning a Lenape Indian term it meant den of serpents mm-hmm. snakes okay and because of that I was always thinking wouldn't it be a neat nickname for Cacalico their mascot instead of an eagle to be a copperhead mm. I mean number one it would be a little out of the ordinary there's a million eagles teams how many copperhead teams it wouldn't offend anybody a right. snake ain't gonna bitch that right. you're uh, no. using its name but that's that's the thing that you know what now the effort amounts. Uh, yeah. So the the Mountaineer, um, several years ago, I do believe they got rid of the pipe because I think in the original uh, effort of Mountaineer, not only did he have his cane, you know, he had this pipe, and that's okay. not acceptable today. And so and I do believe that the pipe is now gone from the pictures. So I mean, so they they altered the Mountaineer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know my kids went to Warwick, and and back when they were in school, there was this big to do over changing the name from Warwick Warriors to Warwick something else. Now they never did, and and good for them. Uh, you know, I don't think any team, high school professional, ever picked their team mascot. Because they wanted to poke fun at somebody. Yeah. I, I think mm-hmm. any mascot was yeah. picked either because they were trying to honor somebody yeah. mm-hmm. or they felt like it was, I don't know, uh, it would lead them to victory. or what. Yeah. I don't think anybody picked a team name to mock anybody yeah. else. Yeah. So so I, I really have no issues with that. And, and where do you draw the line? Okay, the Washington Redskins. Mm-hmm. They had a you know, yeah. big to-do and now they're not the Redskins anymore. Why are the Minnesota Vikings allowed to be Vikings? Mm-hmm. You know, doesn't doesn't a Viking get offended that they're the Vikings? I mean, personally, I, I, if, yeah, if, I don't know where that line is. If, that if is... somebody wanted to be called the Philadelphia Fosnox, or you know, I wouldn't be. I'd be honored. Yeah, I mean, I would, mm-hmm. and they're don't, they could be their mascot could be a donut, <laughs> <don't. laughs> <laughs> which is coming up. Fosnox Day isn't yeah, far away. It is, and technically, they're not actually donuts, are they? Uh, well. Not if a donut is actually considered to have a hole in it. Right. Because a false knock, a real false knock does not have a hole. It's actually square and has no filling. I didn't know square. No filling. No, yeah. No, no hole yeah, yeah. and no sugar coating or yeah, anything like right. that. Yeah, it was it's, plain. It, yeah, it was Very plain. plain. And, yeah. and normally square shaped. I don't know why that was, but, but normally they were. Yeah. And right. uh, and there's there's a lot of misspellings of the. Uh, a lot of people spell it F-A-S-T-N-A-C-H-T, which actually, I guess, is technically the German word for it, it was the night before a fast, which is why you're eating these yes, false right. knocks in the first place, because yes. you're trying to get rid of all the stuff you're, you're not supposed to have during Lent. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah. I say it's spelled like my name. Uh, absolutely. Yes. I'm the only trivia host out there that has a day <laughs> named after him. That's or right. Than so anyway, uh, where, where are we? As in, this room is the retro bar room. And in the pandemic, we did you used yeah, and I I tried to cheat yeah. for trivia, and he did he did uh, the videos of yeah. I 
of I, I had the videos on Facebook, and they saved, you know, they were yeah. still there. Yeah. And then I started using, I thought, well, there's very few people that actually played online trivia that come to my trivia. So I was, like, recycling them. Yeah. And then uh, he, the only one, the only one, maybe other <laughs> people were doing it undercover, but I tried. he was trying to watch the old videos. I was videos watching the old videos trying to, trying to get, get answers. answers. So I had to go in and delete them. <laughs> We, Which by is the way, way, I still have to yeah. win a trivia. Uh, you know, <laughs> out of the, the many, many, many weeks of trivia we've played, we've my wife and I have never won. Although last night we were in fourth place. Yes, well, we, had well, big, but we had a big, had a big team. It was very. Now I will say this though: we were at Old Republic on Sunday. Escape room. Me, Paul, my wife, and his wife Penny, and we won. And yeah. honestly, it was. His wife was three quarters of the reason we won. Penny was the reason we won. She, well, um, she's amazing. I mean, I I handled the little math problems maybe, but but there was a trivia. There were there was uh, Charlie's Chocolate Factory yep. trivia, mm-hmm. and I would have maybe known three of these ten, maybe. And she went down through that oh, sheet. Yeah. And so if I ever do yeah. the Charlie's Chocolate Factory theme. Right. If I were Penny, I'd be a team by myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, well, she's very good at that. So I, I'm more hands-on. So when it came to popping the balloons, he was he, he was an expert at that. <laughs> we could that. pop the balloons <laughs> that we were required to pop, and In come the out ahead. We had to pop them, but yes, uh, and uh, we came out ahead, and we we won a fifty dollar gift card. We did, we did. That was good. Yeah. yeah. So, no, we didn't have to beat 100 teams. It wasn't jam-packed. But no. we beat probably five or six. Hey, I'll teams. take a win. Yeah, yeah. You can, only, <laughs> you can only beat who shows up. You know, that's not our problem. All right. So, so basically, uh, uh, we did come up, and every week we're going to have some kind of topic in the back of our mind if, if it isn't announced. Our ultimate goal is to bring guests onto the show. Uh, we possibly have one lined up for next week if it all works out. But if you're a guest on this, uh, obviously it would be best to be able to be here at 1030 on a Friday morning. But if you're a business owner um, and you want to plug your business a little bit for free, come on here. We'll talk about your business. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. If you're just an average Joe that don't own a business and you just want to talk about any old thing, give us your subject, show up, or just show up and we'll make it up as we go. Yeah, uh, we have a list of things um, you know, that we can discuss back and forth and hopefully we get some some conversation with everybody out there yeah um just yeah. to to create uh, and, and some of it's going to be local right right we're not looking to make any big political statements no we're uh, well i'm politically ignorant for the most part uh i'm sort of anti-politics so i i really don't have a big viewpoint on anything uh you know i just wish everybody'd stay out of everybody else's business basically yeah, yeah. um now, as far as before you were a policeman, you were you worked for the what sewer authority, well, the water yeah. um, and sewer authority for East Kukalka. Yeah, I was there for five years. Um, they they do. don't have their own plant; everything goes to Ephrata. But it's they have all the lines uh, and the towers, um, and that was that was good experience. Had yeah, to climb, well, but had to climb the towers once a year. So the, the Pelts Hill Tower, <laughs> that one was. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's a million gallon or whatever it is. It's a huge tank, and it had to climb up to the very top of the tank, pop the lid, look in, make sure inspection, make sure it's all good. Um, that there was some things on the job that were kind of sketchy, and yeah. you had to go down into you know some dark basement to fix something. The waters, yeah, the, the yeah. meters or whatever. Yeah, and not not every basement is. Like the retro bar room here. No, yeah, I, I mean no, basements little, I've lived in yeah, haven't been like that. They get a little sketchy, you yeah, know. Yeah. And I was telling somebody the other day, at, you know, the old days um, where we had to read the meters. So every three months we had to walk to every house in East Cocalico, and physically walk up to their side of the house where the little meter was, and write that into the book. Yeah, yeah. And, course the best times of the year were fall and spring right uh but the winter when you know it snowed so much back then right yeah yeah uh, you're walking through four feet of snow because that's not an area they would normally shovel um that or you walked around to the side of the house to take that meter reading and just as you're coming around the corner you see the family dog (laughs) (laughs) and he sees you yeah so there is uh that that part was um 
I'm glad the guys don't have to do that anymore. I don't right. believe I think everything's well, electronic think, yeah, now. Yeah, and and that makes sense. I mean, it, it, yeah. you know, that's a lot of manpower to get it. And well, and there's, I mean, nowadays there's way more houses than there was. Oh, back absolutely. Then, too, you know, oh, yeah. It's, it's I mean, like even like over where I used to live when I grew up. I mean, there was a dairy farm behind the house and. A block over, it was all fields and woodland. Yeah. Now it's mm-hmm. for blocks and blocks, houses. You know, yeah. it's uh, way yeah. bigger than what it was. Well, when yeah. I went to high school, we had uh, maybe, I don't know, 140 people in our class. And, like, I knew everybody. Like, yeah. I, I didn't hang out with everybody. But right. if I got out of yearbook today without people's names mm-hmm. in my class, yeah. I could probably tell you everybody's name. Mm-hmm. Now, my wife went to effort as well. And um, she can't do that because, mm-hmm. well, number one, they you did it a little different. You guys at Ephrata... Every year of school, you were in the homeroom with the same people. Yes. Because you went by yes. your last name in yeah. alphabetical order, mm-hmm. which to me is sort of weird because at Cacalico, you I don't know how they arranged it, but you were in, you had different people in your homeroom from middle school, high school. Every year, there was different people. So that in itself got you yeah. at least, oh, yeah, I know Joe over there. Yeah. I, I don't hang out with him, but I know who he is. Yeah. Where you guys got to know pretty well the 25 people that were yeah. in your homeroom, but other than that, maybe not so much. No, but, no, and that was pretty much through all high school, too, that you went with that same group. I was with the M's. Yeah, you know, well, she you, did, too, you know. Yeah, you, you went right up the, the line with the people that you, you know, and, yeah, as much as you know the people in your class. Right. I, I, you had is a effort, it's, I mean, you worked at effort. It, do they still do it that way? Is that how it's still arranged, or you don't know if that's the case anymore? I think it is, but I'm, I'm not completely sure. Yeah, because so. I wasn't dealing with homeroom stuff too much. Okay. Uh, but you're right, things have definitely changed over the years. I look, when I grew up in Akron, I grew up right up from the railroad tracks. And I remember as a kid, the railroad, the train was still right, going got through there. The, okay, where the, the rail track. trail is now. Yes. Because I never got, you know, when I lived in the North Denver hood, <laughs> <laughs> I got maybe, a, you know, to Main Street, Denver, that's as far as I went. So I don't even remember a railroad going through that. Right? Yeah. Was that was it actually a working railroad yes. when you were a kid? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Was a, the mill, uh, which is now an apartment building, the yeah. mill yeah. was there right down the street from us. And inside the mill, uh, Mr. Mellinger and his, and his wife ran the mill, and they had an itty-bitty little store there where we used to go down and you could buy candy. Okay. You know, like, and then like in, a little general store. Right? Yeah, it, right. So they, not only did they deal with all the feed and, and right. the, you know, that would go on the trains, they had this itty bitty little store there. Okay. Um, and I do believe there is pictures in the Akron Borough uh, Municipal Building on the walls. I do believe there's pictures okay. up there of the old. Okay. Uh, I have pictures, some pictures of the old. I have Bellinger's, the him and his wife. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was that was fun growing up. There was obviously Akron is one big hill. Yeah. So <laughs> it was great for sledding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There were so many different areas where you could uh, sled. I mean, we had the Foss knots spelled differently. Up right. The street right. from yeah. us. Yeah. And sliding, you know, going down their hill as a kid was was great memories. And even going uptown. They used to shut down 10th Street, and you could actually, oh, okay. no cars were allowed on 10th Street, and then you could slow wow. down 10th Street. They obviously don't do that anymore. No. But uh, it, it was a great little town. Uh, but things have changed. There used to be fields across from well, and, where and we grew up. Roland Park, tall. was that even a park when yes, you were a kid? It was, oh, it was it a park then. It was. I don't know what year that started. Yeah, it cause wasn't I, as nice as what it is now. I remember, uh, I mean, the only time I got out of Denver was playing midget midget baseball and and our opponents at some point was effort and akron mm-hmm. but but i remember playing akron midget midget baseball at the old akron park that's where we yes to play well, the games. And a, yes i played there too at the old park okay yeah that's, that's the original i don't ever remember traveling and playing akron in no, no, park. Not, no. not when i was eight nine ten years old. I, no, I don't, I, yeah i'm not sure when they created the fields but it wasn't uh yeah, it wasn't that far back, uh, but yeah, it, you had done. Oh, you got a comment that actually means something. Oh, here we go. Oh, very good. Hi, Tom and Nancy. Yeah. Uh, yes, I. You know, I remember as a kid when the when the train wrecked. Okay. And going down there and seeing the train on its not so on its side, but it it yeah, that was the end of the railroad when the train wrecked. And I don't, maybe you guys can remember. I don't remember why it wrecked. I don't know what happened, um, but I do remember that was the end of 
the train going through there. All right. So so in Akron there, it, it was pretty much like it is now. Like if that train derailed, it wasn't flat ground. It was down a hill. It, right. Or, yeah. Okay. Because like in and Denver, it, the railroad, it was on Main Street. And it was, you know, yeah. if the train rolled, it was just going to lay on its side. But none ever rolled in Denver. Yeah. yeah this, <laughs> from what I remember, it wrecked between uh, Fulton Street and uh, towards Africa. Okay. Uh, it, it, and that point, it, it, the railroad was here, and then there was hills, because I remember as a kid, Sort of like it is now on the rail trip. I mean, uh, yeah, less, I don't yeah. think the hills were quite as pronounced as okay. they were then. But, but yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's, that's a memory there. That's, yeah, I don't, uh, there was never a train accident in Denver, although I will say this. Right near the, where the railroad track would go underneath the turnpike bridge, like down, it would be east of 4th Street. Uh, on the north side of Denver, there was a, on the turnpike overpass over the creek where the railroad is, I remember one time as a kid, a tractor trailer came off mm. that bridge into the creek, like wow. it fell off yeah. the bridge, and then some real big industrial tow truck had to go drive back the railroad tracks yeah. and pull this truck out of the creek. Now, I don't remember what happened to the driver, yeah, but right. w I was actually, we walked down there when it, when they were like yanking it out of the creek. Mm -hmm. you know, it was, yeah. But no train ever. Wow, that's Denver, impressive but, though. As a kid like that, when you see it, things like yeah, that, yeah. Uh, like Nancy said, Tom remembers going and crawling over the caboose. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. That that And that is ingrained in your in your memory. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's no, wow. I, uh, impactful as a kid because things like that are so big right now right. it's a little different you know yeah. it's, I, how many crashes was i on in my career and well right and, right and, you know one after another it, but something like that as a kid makes quite the impression yeah mm -hmm. um the history that you did on your trivia was a lot of fun for the well, akron yeah Ephrata, cacalico area there was a lot and we did not win that and i grew up here you yeah. know well, I mean? and, and that was I was never, up until when I started selling things on eBay, I decided, like, I had to come up with an item I could sell that didn't require me to go get it weighed, pack it in a box. So, just by happen chance, I, I was never into history at all, up until then. What I chose to sell, because it was easy to package in an envelope, and it was not picked on like baseball cards and stamps as far as quality, I decided I'm going to sell postcards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I started out slow, and it gradually picked up, and I still do that today, and and, and I make, um, I don't get rich by it, but I make decent money doing it. And I learned over the years what, what areas of the country sell better mm -hmm. than other areas. But when I started doing that and seeing all these old street scenes on postcards, it started to really interest me. So then I started accumulating all the local books that they would put out for their bicentennials or their 100-year anniversaries, uh, paperback books with loaded with pictures. Mm -hmm. And the Effort of Historic yep. Society also published quite a few books with, you know, a look back in the Cacalico Valley. Mm -hmm. and, and they're neat books, uh, not because I can't read, but they're neat because they have a lot of pictures. I, I like, yes. The, uh, the older pictures to yeah, see that, that's pretty, that, you know. That, that, yeah, that, that's how things were, and yeah. that was Main Street Denver back in the early 1900s. And, and uh, just on that thought for a second, uh, I know that Mary Macbeth was part of, in Akron, was part of uh, creating a book in the last year, year and a half, okay. um, of from 2000 up in Akron that has a lot of really neat pictures in it, too. But, yeah, I know exactly what you're... And, and the, the thing that, that sort of, you know, sort of is a shame, like when I'm out shopping for postcards, a lot of the printed cards obviously tell you what you're looking at. A lot of the old real photo postcards, like an actual genuine photo, there a lot of them are real neat pictures, but there's nothing on the card to indicate where it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if, if you knew exactly where it was, if that was Main Street and Timbuktu, yeah the card would be worth so much more money than some random street scene of that nobody knows where it is. Yeah. Um, and it's a shame because there, there's a lot of neat old cards out there, but nobody, nobody knows where they're from. Uh, now, there are a lot that also have identification on, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, uh, looking back at that, you know, that it, it really started to interest me and mm -hmm. I accumulated all these books and that actually the Facebook page I started a number of years ago called journey through the past that 
as far as Facebook pages, I mean, my trivia site, my this, that, or the other thing, you know, they get some attention. That journey through the past, there's almost 10,000 people that follow wow. that. And, yeah, I've been a little lacking here late of putting new pictures on, partly because I don't have a lot of new stuff mm-hmm. to put on, but... Um, that gathered a lot of attention, and a lot of a lot of what I'm assuming for the most part is more elderly people looking back. Oh yeah, yeah I remember yeah. when it was like that. But also, believe it or not, and you know most most younger generations now, much like I was when I was younger, really don't care about history. But there are some people that younger that oh yeah. my god, look at what that looked yeah. like. And you know even if you know it's I don't obviously make any money doing it, but it, it by far and away it's the most people were most interested in that site Mm -hmm. as opposed to any other site I have on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, So that's a neat thing. I, you know, I'm given, you know, I got the stuff up there in my bedroom office and I might as well share it with everybody. And, uh, you know, don't do me any good sitting up there Mm -hmm. packed away. So anyway, that's what I'm sure that some of them, the pictures that you have, some of the questions came out of that. Uh, It did. When I did, when I did the history of the Denver effort area, but that, Basically, is where all of them came from. Really. I wish I would have known. Yeah, that. You <laughs> I really wish I would have been rating my. Uh, I kind of sucked at that it. trivia that night. I really had high hopes that there was. A, wow, there was. I mean, but but some people did decent at it. Yeah, they did. And and I didn't. You know, I tried yeah. to make it like long ago history, and then I also had questions about uh, what what was in the store where uh, in the cloister shopping center. What was an yes, anchor store in right. there? Now that wasn't that old. I, no. I mean, the Grants. No. And I remember being in Grants and Nichols when Nichols was there. Remember and, Nichols, uh, yeah. Uh, and one of the other questions you had was, now I'm not Denver, but the people that are watching this that are from Denver, like you said, what's, what was next to the pool? Not the pool. The, the building down near the creek in the park. What was originally behind there? Oh, well, where the fish pond is. Yeah. It was, it was actually a mine. Yeah. It was, it was, and then it, turned into not being a very profitable mine and they filled it in but that's that pond was the entrance to the mine yeah that's interesting uh, well and the old the original old denver park used to be behind what was the denver house now which is the declaration house okay but and uh, not when i was alive but behind it was behind the denver house along behind the turkey hill there and they had uh, apparently an indoor basketball court oh. like like Mm-hmm. Probably more like a barn, mm-hmm. and this this was way back. I mean, yeah. when I was a kid, the Denver Park is where it still is today. I never was alive to witness that. But also out in Stevens, where St. John's UCC Church and the Denver Elementary School, and uh, <laughs> there's a guy that sucks. He's got to work today, but he's got uh, <laughs> nice Mark. Someday he can sit here with us. Oh yeah. Uh, but anyway, they uh, there used to be it was the Stevens amusement grounds, and they used to on the railroad there would be like for the day top notch musical acts would come in and play there before the church and before the high school was built there. It was mm-hmm. I, I have pictures of that where there was what appeared to be you know thousands of people there. Yeah, uh, where they all came from yeah, back right. then I don't know, but yeah. the railroad was a big way of getting around back then. You know, not so much now anymore, but uh, no. That was a lot of good questions there, um, and you included. Uh, what was really interesting the the square in Ephrata. Um, what was it the square in Ephrata way back when? Um, and you talked about the the Fooder Gong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I, I again and, there was there's a lot of people. Well, there's a lot of people that aren't even all that old that were at the Fooder yeah. Gong. I never was there mm-hmm. again. It was a little too far. Yeah, out of no, my parents there. went there. I was too young. I, they wouldn't take me. I, up there I've never. I was never in that building. Uh, I was in the building after the fact, after it changed ownerships. But no, not not when it was the food. Yeah, I, I, I never would. As a matter of fact, the only the only restaurant I ever re- recollect being two restaurants when I was before I got out of high school. One one time I was probably in middle school. My mom and dad and me and I guess another couple or two went to the Calico Ephrata football game at Ephrata. And after that, we went to the Edgewater, which was the Edgewater back then. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was like I was living the lifestyles of the rich and famous Mm -hmm. because I never got in anyway. Not to say, like I was in the Edgewater after I was 21 and it didn't seem to be quite lifestyles of the rich and famous anymore. But but yeah, that was like a big thing. That that and there was time I went to uh, on a bus trip to a Baltimore Royals baseball game, left in a school bus from the 
Denver Feed Mill parking lot. And I, I really remember this because my grandma went along. She yeah. was a big Orioles fan. So it was me, my dad, and, and it actually was my mom's mom. And on the way home from that game, it was back at when the Orioles played at Memorial Park, not Camden Yards. But on the way back, we the, they had it prearranged that this bus was stopping at a restaurant. And it was down in Maryland. It was called Ordell Bracey's Flaming Pit. I remember mm-hmm. it to this day. And Ordell Bracey actually was a professional football player, I think, for Baltimore back in the day and was retired and started this restaurant, much like Gino's, oh, Gino yeah. Marchetti. He is the guy that he was a football player, started Gino's. Anyway, this was a fancy restaurant. We went in like a little banquet hall mm-hmm. and you could pick like three items or whatever. Uh, but that was the, also the only other fancy restaurant I've been. So like, Zins was not part of the... I was never in Zins Diner before I was probably wow. out of high school. Never. Never. I mean, the, our big thing was, uh, as a kid, if if my parents went to the grocery store at what is now the Redner's Quick Shop, used to be a full-fledged Redner store, and when you would first walk in the door, they had a deli, like sort of like their sub shop now, but they would make subs. If they bought, if they were grocery shopping and brought sub, sub sandwiches home, mm-hmm. That was a that highlight was, of my yeah. life. <laughs> That's as good as it got. In the it, it, it was either that or we were eating banquet bags, one or the other. <laughs> banquet bags for you, Mark. <laughs> yeah. yeah, interesting enough, Mark was one of a group that, that won that trivia that night. For oh, the, yes, uh, he, he did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Him and Kim and Sharon. They, yeah. they won the, and, and he didn't even, like, he only moved to the uh, Cacalico area in middle school. So he <laughs> wasn't a lifer here. Yeah. And, and you can sort of tell that. I thought of this last night because... When the trivia team made up of the effort of cops, uh, I always like to have <laughs> people there to keep me safe for trivia. But anyway, they had a big team last night, and it came up like uh, I, I went out, and I, I walk around, and I chit-chat to these teams between questions, and I think that's what people sort of like about it. But I, I went out, and I, I told Penny, I said, on this picture round, one of those movies, we mm-hmm. talked about at supper yes. last Friday, because yeah. we went out to eat with them. Yeah. And and the movie was The Land of the Lost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh Holly and Will when I and used the yeah. word supper at this table of ten people from Africa, half of them were like, "What's you know like yeah. they? Why do you call supper supper? Well, supper is always supper. Yeah, right. And to us North Denver people, we don't say lunch. That's dinner. Yeah, you're backwards. Yeah, yeah but but that's like just that little yeah. mark. He, I never unless he's joking around with me. He refers to the evening meal as dinner. Yeah. Or yeah, dinner. I never do. Like dinner is yeah, lunch. Yeah. Dinner, dinner is lunch. Is all the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah, lunch is lunch. That's noon. No, I, is... I never used to wear lunch. <laughs> Hardly ever. Like other than okay, I got lunch break at work. But yeah, no, I eat dinner at noon if I'm eating dinner, and I eat supper at night. <laughs> That's <laughs> definitely backwards. Yeah. Well, actually, our yeah. main our main topic for today we didn't even get to. Yeah, it no, yet. we never. But we'll we'll touch on it a bit here. We we're going to take this till maybe eleven fifteen. We got ten yeah, minutes. Got 10 we're minutes. going to talk about traffic. Yep. And what what sort of spurred that on is this new roundabout that I saw in the effort review this week in Reamstown at mm-hmm. at the square of two seventy two and Church Street, and uh, that ain't going to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is too little of an area. See, and this is where we had this discussion last we night. We practiced and, and last night. Yeah, actually. we practiced. We didn't, yeah, we, and this is what happens. We just sit around and we talk about things like this that really. And and <laughs> it, it, let's lunch at Black. We're heading to Black Forest after this for lunch. And lunchtime at the bar at Black Forest, we didn't get into any realms that might pop up. Yeah, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we didn't want to scare all you no, people away from no, day one. No. But anyway, the traffic, that circle, like. Like, unless they steal half of Riviera and Sunoco's parking lot, those tractor trailers, the circle's going to be about 10 foot diameter. Now, it does look from the picture in the review that they're going to shift it um, south towards, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. They're going to shift towards that for a little bit. But I, and I disagree. I think there's plenty of room for tractor trailers to get around there to do that. Uh, I don't, you know, as, as the cops and crashes, when you have a circle, it's slow speed. You might have crashes in that circle, but they're not going to be high speed. So, and, and that I get. You know, that when and, you have a red light and, uh, and you know, that you have to maintain the red light, and if somebody isn't paying attention to that red light, you know, that it's you're going through it. If the electric is out, well, like it, it was. No, that's a point. Like I mean, it was it, yeah. there this past week, it was out. We had a huge grid down my place, 
uh, where the electric was out. Well, that shuts all the lights down. So there's not enough of cops to, to man or fire police to man every red light. Well, and, that's I mean, that, and, and that's people a, don't understand what they're supposed to do when they're the light is out. That's assuming you even are from the area and you know that there's a light there when right, it's dark. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it, that's yeah. There's a lot of issues with no, traffic and that lights. I, get that I, that I, I do get. like circles. I do like the circles. Uh, and and I, I have no issues with circles. Like the circles they put in up on 322, heading right outside of Hershey. Excellent. Yeah. You know, yeah. especially excellent for the people coming out of the side streets. Yeah. Because if you're on 322, Nancy loves tra- and, and Nancy, yeah. I love. I have nothing against traffic circles. I just don't see that working in that location. In that location, I think, I think there's. I don't think they're going to need that much room. I really don't. I, think I mean, even even the uh, navigate through that. The one over the Littitz on uh, Newport and Clay, right? Is it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, not Newport. What is it? What is it? Uh, Roswell Road? It would be called. It's not. It, Newport is the one that goes up to Green Hills grocery store. The one that goes in, down over the mountain and into Lidditz, where they put that circle, is... Yes. That's actually called oh, Russell Road. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's but that one, yep, yep. I, mean, I have no mm-hmm. issue with that one either. Yep. And again, if you're coming out of Clay Road, mm-hmm. it, it's a benefit. Because yes. depending on the time you don't of have day... To stop. It, right. right. Or just you have to yield. And but but you, you don't could, have to sit there for yeah. an hour waiting for an opening, especially yeah. if you're turning left. Yeah. So yes, circles are great. A circle in Reamstown. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet it don't work. Uh, I hope it does, but I'm well, gonna, and you know, there is a lot of truck traffic through there. Well, it is. I mean, that is four a, seasons. You have uh, Pepperidge Farms, Cold Storage, Pepperidge Farms. Um, uh, it there, there is a lot of truck traffic. And speaking of truck traffic and traffic circles, and they had to build them in the air. But uh, well, you're right, Nancy. <laughs> I guess, I guess nobody did. There is naysayers just like me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> But there's not the truck traffic there, you know. It, it. No. Anyway, uh, Main Street and Fourth Denver, red light. Oh yeah. Whoever decided that that uh, Denver cold storage should be down there, and I understand zoning. We talked about this last night. Zoning is zoning, and it's mm-hmm. zone. Every time I'm in Denver, which is once a week these days, to go over, run over to my mom on a Wednesday morning, I swear to God, every time I'm at that red light, there is a truck that is either unable to, in one swing, make either a right or left on Main Street coming up 4th Street. Wednesday this Wednesday, I'm the third car in line on Main Street heading east, ready to go down 4th Street. And this truck tries to swing the turn heading towards the Denver Park. It can't make it. So not only did I, but the two cars in front of me all had to back up just to let this truck swing around. It, that is not that, that, that. I don't know. That just don't work there. It everybody is. It, it's always an issue. Mm-hmm. The trucks, and it's not the driver's fault. No. I mean, I, you know, I will say I think there's some truck drivers out there today oh, that yeah. maybe shouldn't be truck drivers. No, no. I uh, one drive through my lawn about a month ago. Yeah. Uh, it. <laughs> you know, so you know, but yeah. but there there just isn't enough room for yeah. them drivers to to make no. that turn. Maybe they need a circle there. Well, that but now <laughs> imagine you'd have to rip down four yeah. houses. Yeah, <laughs> uh, maybe they could do it up over the house and back down. And back down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it's well, and the other thing, I mean, not so much now, but a couple of years ago when I'd go over to my mom's, and again it was once a week, and uh, fortunately at that red light, I know. You know, having grown up in Denver, like at the old uh, Showwater and Wenrick garage, I always, if there's any question going home, I swing down the alley and come out in 4th Street and I don't mm-hmm. have to deal with the light. Um, not everybody knows that. I mean, if you're from Denver, you probably do, but uh, if you're from no. out of town, no, yeah, you wouldn't know. My wife wouldn't know, but it's not like it's, I'm not sneaking into a dark, deserted, it's it's meant to drive on. Yeah. It's just nobody no. does. No. But, uh, yeah, well, good. All right, well, uh, you know, we're not going to bore you forever. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this is sort of what it's going to be like, and not we're not going to talk about the same thing every week. Uh, it's mm-hmm. going to veer off in any old direction. Uh, however, if we can conjure up a guest or two, yeah. uh, then you'll be able to listen as much to the guest as us discussing whatever the guest wants to talk about. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not super knowledgeable on any, any one subject. Uh, Paul, on the other hand, is very knowledgeable on a lot of subjects. No, I mean, no, through no, his no. police work and everything. <laughs> well, you know, 
I'm going to say, he's like the meat and potatoes of this thing. He's yeah. he's going to have your knowledge area. I'm like the succotash sitting over there. I'm going to throw in comments to keep the thing rolling and give my little uh, two-bit opinion. And, and the subjects I might be more of an expert on are the ones that, we didn't want to probably talk about it yet today yet. because we didn't want to scare anybody off. But if you want to learn about ancient aliens and life after yeah, death yeah. and whatever, I'm your man. Yeah. If you want to talk Ooh. about local news, he's your man. All right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah just to, to, to continue the discussion, uh, it doesn't have to be somebody that owns a business. No, no, be no. Somebody it be who just has another opinions, another guy who has thoughts. nothing better, or a lady, or or. Yeah. High school kid, whatever, like, has nothing better to do on a Friday morning. Stop over. Yeah. Let us know you're coming. Yeah. Uh, it don't have to be more than a 10-minute advance no. notice, I guess. Stop right. in. We'll, we'll have you as a guest, and uh, you know it'll just make things even more interesting. It'll give more conversation, more opinions, and yeah. whatever. And if you're out there like Nancy did, don't yeah. be afraid to uh, yeah, chime in. Chime in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we could, I, I got not only are we on a laptop, but we're looking at ourselves on 65 mm -hmm. inches from about three feet away. Yeah. So, <laughs> we're, scary, we're, probably getting, we're probably getting uh, <laughs> radiation. You know, we're yeah, probably yeah. suffering a little bit of radiation burn here. But <laughs> so there's going to be, you know, discussion on um, some local topics. Right. Nothing, nothing right. real heavy. And, and, and I've got like a ton of uh, examples of what has happened in the effort area that is neutral, not putting right, anybody right. on the spot. Yeah. No, but it's and, just like you, you scratch your head and they. They yeah. Did, what? Like yeah. what happened? Well, and, and do be do be fully aware that anything is said on here is strictly our opinion. We are yes, not experts no. in anything. I'm, and uh, traffic circles you know, is not our thing. No, no, it's just something uh, to talk about. We, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's our opinion. We're we're entitled to that, and mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we're doing. And again, it's just we're doing this for the fun of it. You know, if. <laughs> If anybody wants to throw a couple bucks, we'll advertise on oh, it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but for right now, it's just that, uh, you know, I got trivia just about every night in the evening. I didn't have much to do on a Friday morning. So here we are. We We're going to continue to do this, and hopefully we can generate a little bit of uh, people that watch. And, again, as soon as we're done here, this will get saved to Facebook, and you can watch at your leisure. So for now, we're uh, – Heading to Black Forest. We're going to go to Black Forest. We're going to go to Black Forest where we go every Friday for lunch yes. and uh, probably figure out next week's topic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or continue this discussion off camera. <laughs> that will more than likely happen. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, for those that tune in, thanks. For those yes. that might watch Thank later you. in the week, thanks. And we'll see you next Friday at 1030 right here in the Retro Bar Room. Till next week. See you later. <laughs>